I would say, uh, first, the relevance of the UN. You know, the UN used to be more relevant in 1950s, 60s. <laughs> huh? But what, what happened was, as the number of countries grew, hmm, and those five uh, who were the self-selected chaudhrys of the system, <laughs> huh, they, they actually, see, it was easier for them to dominate a smaller number of countries between whom there was a big gap hmm, that their, their power or their uh, authority was there, the rest of the world was there. What has happened in the last 30, 40 years? That is no longer the case, you know. Uh, I mean, you, I'm now taking India itself. You know, the, that uh, today the top, the five permanent members are not the five largest economies of the world. That is just one indication I'm giving you. Also, what has happened is with the passage of time, other countries have developed a confidence the, uh, to, ch you know, challenge saying, I don't agree with what you are saying. Then they are fighting among themselves also. That, you know, we seen in Ukraine that they could not, uh, you know, even themselves come to an agreement. So, <coughs> and even during COVID, you know, uh, everybody said COVID is, you know, the worst thing which has happened. It was, I mean, if you look at the number of people who died, the, the number of uh, deaths in the world would compare with what happened in a world war. Hmm? But what was the role? I mean, Usama, think back. Did anybody think UN was going to help anybody in COVID? You know, so uh, the, the fact is, in many ways, the the limitations of of UN are showing. You know, now in normal life, you know, in anything, what when s some product or some organization, any organization, gets older, what do you do? You bring in newer people, you know, younger people. You bring in new energy. You broaden out. Even if it is company, you will get more stakeholders. You will uh, now. What is the normal process of renewal and change, which is, which is applicable everywhere, in every walk of life? That, that uh, natural process of change today is being denied in the UN. It is being denied in the UN because there are just a few countries. Because when you ask me what are our prospects, you know, 20 years ago people would say, yes, India ko hona chahiye you know, one day they will get there. With each year, definitely with each five years, ten years, I can see people actually feel, no, India must be there. We actually feel strongly you are not there. Sometimes when I meet other, other foreign ministers or leaders, before I bring it up, they tell me, you know, that feeling is very much there. And people also realize our value because just... Uh, you know, I give you abhi abhi jo hamara G20 ka anubhav jo tha. You know, G20 after the Ukraine conflict started was in a very difficult situation. Because between Russia and Western countries, there was a complete uh, uh, disagreement. And many of the developing countries, jo hum global south kehte hain, they felt that their interests on trade and uh, debt and these were, were uh, being ignored. Now, people did not think that there will actually be a consensus, a sarv samati in the G20. There was no expectation that the Delhi meeting in September will produce a, a united outcome. But we managed it. Now, why I'm citing that to you is, if a country has such a capability, such a country in the UN Security Council can actually contribute uh, as well. But I would say, you know, with each passing year, uh, the feeling in the world is India ko hona chahiye. I can, I can feel that support. Uh, you know, like in many cases, you have to, you have to continue, you have to persevere. Like, you know, the world does not give things easily and generously. Kabhi kabhi lena bhi padta hai. So we'll have to, you know, keep, keep moving on.
last last one in the white shirt ah i will good afternoon sir myself parth vevare i am a second year engineering student from bellur institute of technology <laughs> Sir, India was criticized for buying Russian oil during the Ukraine-Russia war. But on the other hand, 